let's go and talk about the top three mistakes that I see students make when using the unit circle. I'm going to go over each of the mistakes, but then offer some advice that you can use to avoid making these mistakes on your own. Now, spoiler tip, I've made these mistakes and I've also seen many, many students make these exact same mistakes. So I know what to look out for. And that's the way I want to approach this video is showing you what the mistake is, but then also showing you what to look out for and what to make sure you do instead. All right, so let's go and talk about the first one. And this one's pretty obvious, but again, ladies and gentlemen, this happens all the time. And it's just switching up your points as well as angles. I'll just write up points here because I think you'll, you'll get the idea. So we know in the unit circle, there's kind of like really two main points that students mix up, right? We're not going to talk about the square root of two over two. I don't know why I just said that because then that's exactly what I wrote down. Uh, we're not going to talk about the square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. Um, I think everybody doesn't need to worry about switching that one up. But what about these two points? These two points are eerily similar. It's the exact same values. It's just they're switched up. So we have square root of three over two comma one half and one half comma square root of three over two. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these show up all over on the unit circle. Yes, there's some pluses and some minuses, but oh my God, how many times do we know exactly what the answer is? And maybe we're taking a test or maybe we're doing our homework and we just have that brain fart and we switch up the points. It happens all the time. What also happens all the time is students switch up the angles. So remember you have like 30 degrees, right? 45 degrees as well as 60 degrees. Now, later in this video, I'm going to go over exactly how we use these and how these are helpful on the unit circle. But what happens all the time is when we're dealing like with radians in terms of pi over six, pi over four, as well as pi over three, students will get these mixed up. Now again, it makes sense, right? You have a six here and you have a six there. You have a three here and you have a three there. So a lot of times if people are given like a 30 degrees, but they need to convert to radians, they'll think pi over three. Or if they have something in radians, pi over six, they immediately think 60 degrees, right? But again, just a quick thing to just remember, we know, ladies and gentlemen, that 30 degrees is less than 60 degrees, right? And we know that one over six is less than one third, right? If you have like a candy bar and you break it up into six parts, those parts are gonna be smaller than if you took a candy bar and broke it up into three different parts, right? So make sure that you just remember that or just always do a quick little check because yes, the 30, 30 degrees is not equivalent to pi over three, right? It's equivalent to pi over six. So make sure um, that you have that. And then again, to go through like the unit circle, you need to know where these points lie, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the first quadrant that you need to know. Now, all students need to know this first quadrant and you need to have this memorized. Now, if you don't have it memorized, I'm going to give you a quick little tip that you can use to go ahead and have this memorized. Now, if we're looking at our three angles, right? We have 30, 45, 60. We know that 30 degrees or pi over six is the smallest of the angles, right? So that has to be this one right here. Then you have your middle one, which is your 45 or, or pi over four. And then you have the larger angle, which is 60 degrees or pi over six. Now, how do you remember these points? Because again, if you're quick um, switching them up, a lot of times it'll just be, you know, you just do a mental fart like with 30 and pi over three or other times you just don't remember like where do these points go? That's why it's so important to remember the unit circle. But and more importantly than memorizing the unit circle, what I always tell my students is to practice. You have to practice doing this. And what I have is I actually have a worksheet um, that I'll put down below that helps you go over the unit circle. And my promise to you is if you do this worksheet that just is about evaluating points on the unit circle, it's a lot of problems, but I'm telling you, you go through it, you're not going to have to worry about remembering where these points are in the inner circle. So I'll have that link down below um, if you're interested in it. And it's one of the things that I gave my students every single year because students just didn't get enough practice. And when you don't get enough practice, you start making these mistakes. Okay. So let's go through how to find these points. Now, the cool thing about these points is you could use like there's videos on like the hand rule and I didn't never really liked um, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. I just, I told my students that we know each of these points in the first quadrant of the unit circle are all fractions. And what I always just told them was just one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. So the numerator, it's always square root of one, square root of two, square root of three. Then on the way down, it's square root of one, square root of two, square root of three. And then the cool thing is everything is divided by two. So you can just put a two in the denominator for all these. Now, do you need to write square root of one? No, you can just write a one there, right? So that's why these points, and actually let me move this down so I can rewrite these. Let's see if I can capture everything. Hopefully, didn't get myself another room. Yes. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite these um, just in red, just a little bit bigger. So this is square root of three over two comma one half. This is obviously the square root of two over two. Hopefully you got that one. And then this one is one half comma square root of three over two. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, memorize these or do the practice in the practice problems that I provide you um, over and over and over. So therefore, this first quadrant of the unit circle you have like the back of your hand, right? That is how important this needs to be. And so many mistakes can be avoided with you just having a firm grasp of your first quadrant. Because the next mistake that students will make is once they know the first quadrant, they're like, all right, I kind of memorized that or I've done enough examples of that. Now what I'm gonna do is I just wanna memorize all of the quadrants. And my advice to you is if your teacher is telling you to memorize all the quadrants, run. Well, I know you can't run, right? Because you're stuck in the class. But either way, I, I do not approve that you need to memorize the all, every quadrant of the unit circle. First quadrant, yes, you need to you need to know that. All the other quadrants, no, ladies and gentlemen. Like if you've ever created an activity where you write in all the points of, of the unit circle, you start to see patterns, right? And that's something very, very important. And I don't have a problem with that, you know, activity because I used to do it as well for my students. But to think that you're going to try to memorize all those points on that unit circle, you're just going to forget it. Um, you know, the main important thing is to know the first quadrant and then also to know this next thing, which is going to be reference angles. OK, so what I'm about to do is I'm just going to go through a quick little process the way that I showed my students really all you need to know to be able to find the point on any unit circle. OK, so do not try to think you can memorize unit circle, because, again, what comes up in the next mistake, as well as when you have negative angles, it confuses you and you'll you'll end up making mistakes. So I don't want you to do that. What I want you to know is what is the reference angle. Now, what is the definition of a reference angle? The reference angle is the acute positive angle between your terminal side of your angle and the x-axis. This probably sounds confusing, but that's kind of the mathematical way. So let's go through an angle. What if I gave you an angle theta equals five pi over four, okay? Now, if you're thinking about that in terms of degrees, that's going to be 225 degrees. But let's go and graph this. Hopefully you have a good idea of how to graph angles. So, you know, all right, we're on the x-axis, right? We know we're gonna go halfway around the circle. And if you were to break that, we know that's pi, right? Which in terms of um, four, or in terms of force, we could write that as four pi over four, right? We could break that up into four extra sections. And then so if we're at five pi over four, that's just gonna be an extra section right here, okay? Now, here's where the reference angle comes in. The reference angle, again, is this, oh, why won't you select this? There you go. The reference angle is the acute positive angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. Now, again, remember, each of these sections is pi over four, right? We know halfway around the circle is pi, all the way around is two pi. So this is broken up into four equal sections. Each one's pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four. But each of these little sections is pi over four, the angle, right? Now, this is that reference angle. This is pi over four. Here's the cool part. This point right here is equivalent to pi over four on your first quadrant, right? The values, the points are exactly the same. The only difference is going to be the positive and the negatives because we know anything in the first quadrant is always positive, positive, right? The X and the y, uh, X and y coordinate are positive, positive. Second quadrant, my X coordinate is negative. My Y coordinate is positive. Third quadrant, everything is negative, the x and the y coordinates. And then fourth quadrant, we have a positive x, but we have a negative y coordinate. Okay. So if I graph an angle, again, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter if it's seven pi over three, it doesn't matter if it's um, uh, five pi over six, like whatever. Graph the angle, identify what the reference angle is. Now it's important to note it. It's important to note that if you have a point that is on the axes, then those are not going to, those are not going to have reference angles. So you just need to remember these coordinate points, right? You have, you just need to know what these points are and know which axis it lies on. So just a quick review, because I don't know, I'm a teacher, so I'm just adding to this end. You need to make sure you know the stuff, okay? Um, two, 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 and then this one is going to be, what is this, a zero comma negative one. Now, a important little tip. Guys, the reference angle is always just going to be a subset of whatever that angle is, typically, not always, but typically if you're gonna have like, for instance, so here, my reference angle is pi over four. What did I say? Seven pi over three. So if I give you like theta equals seven pi over three, the reference angle is going to equal a pi over three. 
we always put this little uh, mark there. And then what was I said, like five pi over six. So if you have like theta equals five pi over six, and again, you can graph these and verify this, the reference angle is going to be a pi over six, okay? Now this is really important because if I look and I wanna graph, like, or I wanna know what exactly those points are, so I have five pi over four. Now again, knowing that I have this memorized, pi over four has a coordinate point square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. But I know that five pi over four is in the second or in the third quadrant. So now I know that this coordinate point that this relates to is going to be a negative square root of two over two comma a negative square root of two over two. I didn't try to visualize what the unit circle was and all those points there. All I need to focus on looking at my angle, telling me from knowing what the angle is, telling me what quadrants it is in, as well as what is going to be the reference angle. Once I know the reference angle, I go to my first quadrant, which I know all those points because I did the practice in this video, as well as I, I have memorized it. So, and then I just make sure I use the same points, but then I apply the correct positive and negative. And that's all you guys need to know. Don't waste your time trying to memorize the unit circle. But, um, which goes into the last one where students will make mistakes on the unit circle, when, especially when they try to memorize, is when we start giving them angles where they need to use period as an aid or the other thing, which is coterminal angles. Now, a lot of times when we're first learning trig or the unit circle, our teacher will give us problems on coterminal angles and reference angles, but we don't actually apply how they're being used. And sometimes it's a busy work and, some, and students will not take it seriously. But ladies and gentlemen, being able to use, I already showed you why using reference angle is so important. Coterminal angles is just as important, right? A lot of students would memorize the unit circle and then I'd say, okay, cool, you've memorized the unit circle, right? So what, if, what is the point that corresponds to seven pi over three? And they're like, well, that's not on the unit circle. And I'm like, you're right, it's not on the unit circle, but you need to know how to graph this, okay? And so sometimes it would get confusing to them and they would be like, well, how am I gonna go and do this? You know, they say, all right, that's pi or six pi, or six pi over three or three pi over three, that would be six pi over three. And they're like, okay, and they graph it. And they're like, okay, now I got over here. Now again, what is this reference angle? The reference angle in this case is simply just going to be a pi over three. Pi uh, equals a pi over three. So, and we also recognize that it's in the first quadrant. I know that pi, um, pi over three has the coordinate point of one half comma square root of three over two. Go back to the video if, I'm not, if you're, don't check my work. Um, so therefore this coordinate point that corresponds to this angle is going to be uh, one half comma square root of three over two. Now, if you understand coterminal angles, because coterminal angles um, is going to represent the exact same point here as your um, as if you just had the angle pi over three in this reference angle. Okay, but what you can also do with coterminal angles, or what we like, what I like to do is explain is use period as an aid. So rather than looking or to say that pi, seven pi over three and pi over three are what we say coterminal angles. So um, another thing is use period as an aid. So if I gave you uh, seven pi over three, what I want you to be able to do is, can you rewrite seven pi over three with a as an addition statement with a revolution? Because when I go all the way around the circle, like that is not really changing the problem. That's just me going all the way around the circle, right? So I can rewrite this as one revolution, which is six pi over three plus a pi over three. Then ladies and gentlemen, if I'm just trying to identify where is the point on the unit circle, I don't care about going around the circle that one time, right? So I can just disregard the six pi over three and rewrite it as pi over three. Or not rewrite it as pi over three, but just focus on finding the point at pi over three. Now, let's go over to a mistake though that students will make with this. And again, let's do one that's a little bit more difficult. What if I gave you theta equals a negative 15 pi over two? Now again, at this one, I've seen students graph this so many times. They just go around the circle and say negative direction. They keep on going around and around and it's a waste of time. Think about using period as an aid, okay? So what I can do is make sure you have a negative outside the brackets. Now let's go ahead and write, um, write them with revolutions. So a revolution would be two pi or equivalent four pi over two. So I can say that's going to be four pi over two plus four pi over two, which is eight pi over two plus another four pi over two, which is 12 pi over two, plus a three pi over two. So again, let's knock out our revolutions, right? We don't need these. These are just rotations, right? We're just going around and around and around. So forget about those because negative 15 pi over two is going to be a coterminal angle 
with a negative three pi over two. These are what we call coterminal angles. Now, let's see if we can remember what exactly is a negative three pi over two. And if you think about this, let's go back to our graphing practice. I guess I can put it right here. Okay, so we go in the negative direction. This is pi, so that's pi halves. So one half, two halves, three halves. So pi of two is right there. Again, this part here of this point. And again, I showed you up here what it was. It's zero comma one. So the coordinate point that corresponds to this is going to be a zero comma one. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you need some more practice with um, the unit circle, go and check out the practice worksheet I have down below. I'm telling you, you go through that just one time, maybe a couple times, and you will never have to worry about the unit circle again. But if you are looking for some more videos that I do have on the unit circle, or even just some common mistakes that I see students make in math, then go and check out the next video I have for you here, or check out the playlist I have for you down below. Cheers.